Hi, I'm Vanessa from SpeakEnglishWithVanessa.com. Today, we're going to talk about books. Let's get started. Today, I'm going to quickly talk about eight books that are great if you've never read a book in English before. All of these books use simple language, simple vocabulary, but the stories are engaging and interesting and they move quickly. So you don't have to read pages and pages of descriptions of the scenery or of some deep character. Well, in these books, they are generally for upper elementary school kids. So nine-year-old, 10-year-old, 11, 12, 13-year-old, this age group usually reads interesting books, but books that use relatively simple language. So I recommend if you've never read a book before in English, use one of these books. Get one of these books off of Amazon or other places that you can get books in English and try it. Take some time, take a couple weeks to try to read one of these. Because there's eight books, there's a lot of material, so I'm gonna try to go quickly to help you really get an idea for each of these and choose the right book for you. Let's start with the first one. The first book is Roald Dahl's James and the Giant Peach. This book is about a little boy who tries to escape from his terrible ants who he's living with, and he goes inside an amazing giant peach and has a lot of adventures as he's traveling from London to the US. I think that this book is uh, pretty well known. The story is well known. Maybe you've seen the movie, but take some time to read the book. It's not so long. There's some pictures and I'm going to read you the first couple sentences so that you can have an idea about the language that's used. Are you ready? Until he was four years old, James Henry Trotter had had a happy life. He lived peacefully with his mother and father in a beautiful house beside the sea. There were always plenty of other children for him to play with, and there was a sandy beach for him to run about on and the ocean to paddle in. It was the perfect life for a small boy. Then, one day, James' mother and father went to London to do some shopping, and there a terrible thing happened. I'm not going to tell you what happened. You'll have to read the book to find out. This is our first book and the most simple. We're going to start with the most simple and then go up to a little more challenging. But all of these really you could read if you've never read a book in English before. Let's go to the second one. The second book is a little more serious. It is Lois Lowry's Number the Stars. This book is about a little girl in Denmark who decides to hide and try to save her Jewish friend during World War II. So this book, as you can imagine, is not, not as funny as the first book, but it also has an interesting storyline. I'm gonna read you the first couple sentences so that you can get an idea for the language. Why are you running? I'll race you to the corner, Ellen. Anne Marie adjusted her thick leather pack on her back so that her school books balanced evenly. Ready? She looked at her best friend. Ellen made a face. No, she said laughing. You know I can't beat you. My legs aren't as long. Can't we just walk like civilized people? She was a stocky 10 year old, unlike lanky Anne Marie. So as you can tell from the first few sentences of this book, there are probably a few words that might be new to you, such as stocky, lanky, well, these words are important for the story, but they're not essential. So as you're reading, you can understand the general idea. And then if you want to underline those new words and look them up immediately or look them up later, you can get a better idea for these specific words, but they're not going to stop you from understanding the general story. And I think for me, when I read my first book in French, when I finished the book, I felt so accomplished. I felt like I had done something amazing. Even though the book wasn't that long, it was maybe something like this. I felt amazing because I finished the book and I generally understood the story. So if you can generally understand the story and gain that confidence that, yes, I can do it. I can read a book in English then you can go back and you can learn the specific words 
or you could move on to some of the other books that I'm gonna recommend. The third book that I'm gonna recommend is E.B. White's Charlotte's Web. This book is a classic children's story and it's got a kind of crazy story when you think about it. It's a story of a pig who is gonna be killed to be eaten and a spider who decides to save the pig's life. So it's about animals, but it's also featuring a little girl, which is a really touching, endearing story. I'm going to read a couple sentences to you from the beginning of this book. Chapter 1, Before Breakfast. Where's Papa going with that axe? said Fern to her mother as they were setting the table for breakfast. Out to the hog house, replied Mrs. Arable. Some pigs were born last night. I don't see why he needs an axe, continued Fern, who was only eight. Well, said her mother, one of the pigs is a runt. It's very small and weak, and it will never amount to anything. So your father has decided to do away with it. Do away with it, shrieked Fern. You mean kill it just because it's smaller than the others? Well, so far, you can see because this book is for maybe 10-year-olds, I think I read this book when I was in fourth or fifth grade, they often explain some of the vocabulary words. So here in the book, the mother says, one of the pigs was a runt, R-U-N-T. Maybe this is a new word for you, and I think the author is explaining the word because it might be a new word for some of the original native English speaker readers of this book as well. And she says, it's a runt, it's small and weak. So you're learning vocabulary through the people in this book. And then when the mother says, your father decided to do away with it. This word do away with, maybe some people who are reading this book understand what it means, but maybe they don't. So here, Fern, Fern is the girl, Fern says, do away with, you mean kill? So here you can understand that the expression do away with in this situation means kill. So you're learning vocabulary through the characters. Excellent, an amazing story. Let's go to the next book. The next book is Richard Atwater's Mr. Popper's Penguins. Unfortunately, I don't have a physical copy of this book, but I'm still gonna explain it and read to you a couple sentences that are digital on my computer. So this book, Mr. Popper's Penguins, is a delightful kind of silly story about a man who has a lot of penguins. <laughs> Maybe you've seen the movie, I think it's with Jim Carrey. Read the book, don't watch the movie first, read the book, and learn something silly. The vocabulary and sentences are really simple in this book. So I hope it will help to build your confidence and get you interested in reading books in English. I'm gonna read to you the first couple sentences. Chapter 1. Stillwater. It was an afternoon in late September. In the pleasant little city of Stillwater, Mr. Popper, the house painter, was going home from work. He was carrying his buckets, his ladders, and his boards so that he had a rather hard time moving along. He was spattered here and there with paint and calcimine, and there were bits of wallpaper clinging to his hair and whiskers for he was a rather untidy man. Hmm. Here, as before, we have a couple words that might be new to you, but in general, you can imagine Mr. Popper. He's carrying ladders and buckets, and he has wallpaper stuck to him. He has paint everywhere. He is an untidy man. So you could learn this word untidy by the descriptions. And it continues going where he meets a bunch of penguins and lots of crazy things happen. It's an excellent book with pretty simple sentences and simple vocabulary, a good place to start. Let's talk about the next book. The next book is Holes by Louis Sakar. I think that's how you say it. <laughs> well, this book is about a boy who has to go to a detention center and dig holes. It's a pretty well-known story as well, and that's one of the reasons why it'll be easy to follow if you already know the story. But also, the thing that I like about this book is that the chapters are really short. So here we have chapter one, 
and already it's chapter two. So you're not waiting for other things to happen. It's, it goes really fast. Let me read you the first couple sentences. There is no lake at Camp Green Lake. There was once a very large lake here, the largest lake in Texas. That was over a hundred years ago. Now it's just a dry, flat wasteland. There used to be a town of Green Lake as well. The town shriveled and dried up along with the lake and the people who lived there. So in this short excerpt, there are probably a couple new words such as wasteland, shriveled, but hopefully from the context, you can get an idea, wasteland, dry, flat, wasteland. Hmm, you can get the image that it's a dried lake with nothing. The soil isn't good, there's no trees, it's not beautiful, it's waste, kind of like garbage. <laughs> so hopefully this book, Holes, would be a good introduction to your English reading journey. Let's go to the next one. The next book is called My Side of the Mountain by Jean Craighead George. This book also I don't have a physical copy of, but it's on the computer, so I want to tell you a little bit about it. This book is one of my favorite books for young people, and it's about a little boy who decides to go live in the woods, and he has to find food, he has to find shelter, and I think this book has inspired a lot of people to explore nature and just do something adventurous. I know for me when I was younger, it inspired me. When I taught English to Americans in the US, we read this book in seventh grade, so they were 13 years old, and they loved this book because it was really inspirational about going and trying new things. So let me read you a couple sentences, and hopefully you'll get an idea for the language. Chapter one, in which I hole up in a snowstorm. I'm on my mountain in a tree home that people have passed without ever knowing that I am here. The house is a hemlock tree, six feet in diameter and must be as old as the mountain itself. I came upon it last summer and dug and burned it out until I made a snug cave in the tree that I now call home. Here he's describing his tree home. So you get this image of someone who is in the middle of the woods alone, but you get a feeling of satisfaction, of pride. I made this cave, this home in a tree. I really recommend this book if you like nature and if you like adventure, check this one out. Let's go to the next book. The next book is called Hatchet by Gary Paulson. This is a book that I think is required reading in the US for 9, 10, 11 year olds because it's also full of adventure like the previous book. It's about a little boy who f is in a plane crash and he has to survive in the Canadian wilderness with only a hatchet. A hatchet is this thing here. It's kind of like an axe, a small axe, and he has to survive. So let me read you a couple sentences and you can get a feeling for the language. Brian Robeson stared out the window of the small plane at the endless green northern wilderness below. It was a small plane, a Cessna 406, a bush plane, and the engine was so loud, so roaring and consuming and loud that it ruined any chance for conversation. Not that he had much to say. He was 13 and the only passenger on the plane was a pilot named what was it? Jim or Jake or something? Who was in his mid forties and who had been silent as he worked to prepare for takeoff. Here we have a picture of a boy looking over the beautiful Canadian wilderness in a plane alone with someone who he doesn't really know. Hmm, what could happen? I recommend it. Let's go to the last book. The last book is Scott O'Dell's book, Island of the Blue Dolphins. This book is the most challenging out of all of these recommendations, but it's still a book that's usually read by 12 or 13 year olds in the US. And this book is based off of a true story. It's absolutely incredible. 
because in the true story, there was a woman who was living on an island off the coast of California for 20 years by herself. No one else was on the island, and after 20 years, someone found her, and she was happy, she was healthy, and it's the story about what was her life like. We don't know because actually when they found her in real life, no one could understand her language. They didn't even know what her language was. So no one will ever really know what this woman did while she was living on the island by herself for 20 years. But Scott O'Dell decided that this is a beautiful story and he wanted to create it. He wanted to imagine what this woman's life was like by herself. So I'm going to read you a couple sentences so that you can get an idea for the language. I remember the day the Alouette ship came to our island. At first it seemed like a small shell afloat on the sea. Then it grew larger and was a gull with folded wings. At last in the rising sun it became what it really was, a red ship with two red sails. My brother and I had gone to the head of a canyon that winds down to a little harbor, which is called Coral Cove. We had gone to gather roots that grow there in the spring. Here she's explaining some of her story before she becomes alone on the island. Well, I recommend it if you're interested in imagining what could have happened in history, because we have no idea, but it's a great book quite interesting and it's simple enough it's a little challenging but it's simple enough to start your english reading journey i hope that at least one of these books sounds interesting to you so that you can get started reading in english i have a video where i talk about some reading techniques to help you really learn as you're reading and also enjoy it I made a video a while ago about some more challenging books, so if these books seem too simple for you, make sure to check out that video and let me know in the comments what are some other recommendations you have for some kind of simple book in English that's a good book to get started with. Thanks so much for learning with me and I'll see you the next time. Bye! The next step is to download my free ebook. Five Steps to Becoming a Confident English Speaker. I want to help you master English and speak fluently. Feel free to subscribe so that you don't miss new English lessons. Thanks so much for learning with me. Bye!